Our first guest tonight is the co-chair of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and author of the new book, How to Avoid a Climate Disaster, The Solutions We Have and the Breakthroughs We Need, which is on sale now. Please welcome to the show, Bill Gates. How are you, Bill? I'm great. Thanks so much for making time for us. I want to talk about the book. I, obviously, people know you as a philanthropist. They know you as the co-chair of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. You also have a podcast uh, with my dear friend Rashida Jones, Maybe not the most obvious pairing. How did that start? A friend from Hollywood said that uh, we were complimentary. And in fact, uh, it ended up being a lot of fun. Uh, you know, she's got a creative background. I do not. Uh, I'm kind of science oriented. And so we picked uh, five topics and uh, uh, went well. Yes, I can tell you, uh, you might not have an entertainment background, but as a friend, she's been useless with my computer prog uh, problems. So I'm glad the two of you uh, found each other. Uh, I, you know, I want to talk a little bit about vaccines before we move on to climate. And obviously, uh, it was a bit of a bumpy start with the rollout here in the States. Things are obviously looking a lot better. Uh, but you are focusing on the importance uh, to get vaccines into developing countries. Why do you think it's important for people to step back and not just look at this as a national issue, but a global one? Well, the first reason is that we don't want other humans to die. And so helping them out is uh, morally important, but also we want the world economy to go back to normal that creates jobs here. And we'd also like to avoid the disease constantly returning to our country. If we can actually get it to super low numbers everywhere in the world or even to zero, then tourism, travel, all these things can resume, which is very, very important. And so we're kind of all in it together uh, because the, you know, people travel a lot and uh, we, we can share these vaccines, uh, not just based on who has the most money. You talk about how we're all in this together and you're someone who over the course uh, of your career has tried very hard to work with people across the aisle. I think you've looked at it as, you know, we have to put aside our differences. We're talking about uh, things that are for the greater good. Yet it also seems like science uh, specifically has been politicized more maybe in this year than at any point in my lifetime. Uh, do you find that uh, depressing when you try to move forward with this? Well, it's sad that the U.S. response was so poor. Uh, people would have expected it to be one of the best in the world. And in one respect, it was good. We funded a lot of this vaccine work. Of these first five vaccines, four of them, uh, there were big amounts of money from uh, the BARDA Department of the Government. Uh, and that's now showing us that this will come to an end. The va these vaccines are miracles. Uh, thank God that the... Uh, private sector with government money uh, has pulled these together. But in other respects, uh, the last years has been frustrating because the willingness to push guidelines and admit that things are tough, you know, the ability to show leadership on masks, uh, and now, you know, encouraging uh, vaccine uptake, uh, you know, I think uh, the U.S. has a lot to look back on and, and uh you know, re figure out that when this comes next time, we have to do better. Uh, you know, obviously in the last week, we've seen states, uh, uh, Texas, uh, Mississippi is a couple of examples. They are now, you know, from the governor's office down rescinding the statewide mask orders. Is that something that you find distressing, especially after everything you would have hoped we've learned in the last year? Yeah, I just don't think of wearing a mask as such a deep inconvenience. I mean, you know, we ask people to wear pants. Uh, you know, why why was this is politicized? The mask helps a lot, and although we're near the end, every death is tragic. I, I now I feel terrible about the fact that I I should admit I'm not wearing pants now. <laughs> well, don't go outside. <laughs> you might infect somebody. 